Hello friend humans, Lucas Levy Keppel here, and I am so excited to be heading out on another bikepacking slash cycle touring adventure. Behind me is all the gear I'm going to be taking with me, and I'm going to be packing it on the bike shortly. What's the adventure, you ask? I'm heading to the Ohio to Erie Trail, riding from Cincinnati, Ohio to Cleveland, Ohio, uh, along mostly paved trails, which if you saw my Katy Trail video, you know paved trail uh, is going to be very helpful to making it to the end. If you haven't seen that video, uh, check the link up here for what I was taking and what that trip was like. This time i am changed up my gear significantly and I thought it would be really fun to share that with you. I love watching uh, people's bikepacking videos, what they pack, where they put it on their bikes, all that sort of thing, and there have definitely been some major changes since the last time I took a long trip. This trip is expected to be about six days, uh, so it's a little bit longer, but there are resupply anywhere along it. It's not into the wilderness areas for the most part. In any case, come along with me. I'll show you what I'm taking with, and uh, we can have a nice discussion in the comments about any of this gear. And I hope that you will uh, subscribe to the channel so that you know when uh, the next video goes up of the trip itself. First up, uh, clothing. You got to have things to wear on the bike and in camp. One of the most important things when riding on a cycle tour is to have a nice pair of chamois. These are padded, should keep you uh, safe on the bike, protected. Not exactly comfortable, but more comfortable than without, let me tell you. I've also got this thing, which is from Mission Cooling. Um, it is an equivalent of a buff. Uh, but it's a little longer, and if you uh, get it wet and wring it out, it actually cools down beyond ambient temperature. Very, very helpful. Here I have two pairs of darn tough socks. Uh, my plan is to wear one, and the other one will be drying on the bike as I ride through. Next up, this is puffy jacket, in case it gets cold, and uh, some gloves and a little... Uh, beanie hat, hat here. These are all for in-camp use, not on the bike. Although I can wear the beanie if it gets too much. Then, this one should be familiar to those who watch the Katie Trail video. It's my nice uh, collared shirt if I need to go into town or if it's getting way too cold to be wearing what I'm normally wearing, uh, even with some jackets and things that you'll see in just a little bit. Then, uh, in-camp I like to wear a little bit of a wool shirt here. This red one is the, the wool shirt for in-camp. And the blue shirt is also an in-camp shirt. It's a t-shirt, um, depending on the temperature. If it's, if it's very cold, I'll wear the wool. If it's medium cold, I'll wear the wool. And if it's very warm, I'll wear the t-shirt. Then I've got a pair of leggings here. Keep me warm at night. These are also for nighttime. And underwear, same idea. They're made out of wool, but are comfortable if it's uh, too warm for the leggings. I'm not expecting that. This is October in Ohio, but I'm just wanting to be prepared for whatever it may be. In addition to the on-bike clothing that I just showed you that I'm not wearing right now for obvious reasons, uh, I'm also going to be wearing what I'm wearing right now. First of all, this is an Outdoor Vitals Altitude Ultralight hoodie. It's four ounces. It's amazing at how lightweight it is. Uh, when riding, it keeps me cool, but prevents the sun from getting to my skin, which is ideal. I'm also wearing Outdoor Vitals pants. Uh, these are the Satu Adventure pants. Um, I love it. Satu is one in Malaysian and Indonesian. I lived in Jakarta for three years, so it's got a little bit of a connection there. They have zips down the side that allow them to vent, which is really, really helpful uh, in hot days. But with them zipped up, they actually keep me pretty warm too while biking. Um, and then I mentioned the socks, the darn tough socks that I'm gonna wear. Uh, I've also got a pair of Shimano GR5 um, cycling shoes. This is the Shimano GR5. Uh, it is a flat pedal shoe. I rock flat pedals on the bike. Uh, and it's got a pretty grippy nature to it, which is really, really handy. They're also fairly flexible uh, so that I can walk with them. They allow you to, to walk in one direction, uh, but still put pressure down when you cycle, which is exactly what you want. So next up is my hammock. This is a Dutchware Chameleon hammock 
with Eno Helio straps, and uh, it sets up just like this. Yeah, cool. As you can see, bug net provides there. It's an 11 foot hammock, zips that open up, and uh, I can sit down in it, have a nice bit of a relax. Now in a hammock, you uh, almost always want to have a diagonal lay, which this, because it's 11 feet long, does really, really well. So yeah, most of my time in the uh, Ohio to Erie Trail is going to be uh, sleeping in this particular hammock. I've got a, uh, a pad underneath me instead of a underquilt, and the reason for that uh, is that in case I have to go to ground, I wanted to have something that would at least prevent me from having to sleep on the ground. Now let's take a look at some of the other essentials for sleep. So, uh, I mentioned I had a wise owl sleeping mat. That's what this guy is. It's a pretty long mat. Inflates nicely with the pump sack here. Uh, if you're not familiar with a pump sack, they catch the air, uh, like so. And then, by using a pump sack, it means you don't have to be out of breath as you uh, try to fill up sleeping mat. Now in a hammock, it's usually a good idea to uh, have the sleeping mat not fully uh, inflated. That way you don't uh, rise up out of the hammock or end up in a banana position, which is very uncomfortable. By having it a little less inflated than full, it wraps around you instead of forcing you into the, the banana position. Okay. I'm going to move these aside and talk about the next piece of sleeping gear. <clears throat> and that is this quilt. This quilt should be familiar. It was a 20 degree quilt that I took with me to uh, the Katy Trail and into Colorado and other places. It's from Hammock Gear. It is their burrow. I cannot uh, recommend this quilt highly enough. It has been fantastic. Probably the best piece of gear I have bought. It's kept me warm in very cold temperatures, uh, even with the um, all too common prom problem on hammocks of cold butt syndrome. So the hammock, beer, hammock gear, not hammock beer, the hammock gear quilt has a little zippered foot box, lets you adjust it as you wish, and uh, the rest of it just functions like a quilt at home or a blanket. Just put it on like this. This is made out of down. It does require uh, a special dry bag, which I have two of. So one of those is for this. Okay, let's talk about some more insulation in the hammock. For my head, it's my inflatable pillow. This is separate. And this is a little inflatable seat. I bring along the inflatable seat uh, just so I can sit on the ground more comfortably. Um, it takes a few breaths to fill up, and then uh, it's a lot more comfortable than sitting on hard ground. And this always stays in the bike. If it gets too cold in the, the hammock, or if something else has gone on, if I uh, am not using the, the mat, this also works as a bonus piece of insulation. Right. Ah. Down booties. These are amazing. These are uh, Sierra Designs. I'm not sure if you can see that, but they are fantastic uh, for keeping my feet warm at night. All right, over the top of the hammock, you might have noticed that uh, it was a bug net. So if it had rained, I would have gotten wet. Well, the solution to that is a tarp. And I have here the uh, Cooley Pro tarp from Kamek. What I really like about this tarp is all of the stakes fit into a place on the bag. Now, I did lose one of the actual stakes, but these uh, MSR mini groundhogs fit in it very nicely too. I also have a pack of cords uh, for the tarp, and these allow it to be a little bit more flexible in how it's set up. Sometimes you're not on a perfectly flat area between two trees and need a little bit more cord in order to get to the ground safely. So that's what those are for. Um, and those just go in one of the side panniers on the bike. Okay, now let's talk about cook kit. This uh, GSI 
uh, kit, the Soloist kit, has been fantastic for me. In it is a bag to hold everything. This bag is waterproof and uh, allows it to act as a sink, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, in that bag goes the pot. You can see the pot here has seen some use over time. Um, it has worked well and continues to work well for me. It's made out of aluminum. Inside the pot goes this cup or bowl. It works both ways and uh, that just slides neatly in there. Inside that goes the uh, Isopro fuel. That fuel hooks up to this tiny little BRS 3000 stove. This all folds out and that screws right onto the canister to allow it to be um, uh, adding fuel, uh, adding heat to whatever I want in the pot. Okay. But because that folds up so nicely, it works really, really well just to stick it in there. There's a big lighter. That's what lights the whole thing. And then in order to keep it a little quieter, I have this nice little kitchen towel, uh, microfiber towel, which goes into the pot as well. Lid goes on there. Okay, and then everything fits neatly in the pot. The bale turns over the top to hold it all in place. All of that goes into the sink bag, which really needs two hands to go in. And then that's a very compact little cook kit that weighs maybe three pounds. It's or not even that, pound and a half. It's really, really helpful. Now, in addition to the GSI Soloist cook kit, I also have a few other items. I've got a bowl, I've got my titanium spoon, I've got a little cleaner in there, and I've got some camp suds that all go together. That's the majority of my cook kit. For water, which is very important, I have this bag from Seanock uh, that allows to connect to a Osprey Quick Connect tube, and that allows me to fill my water bag when it's on the bike. I found this really helpful. You just unplug the uh, hose there. Yeah, you get a little water places, but it's okay. And then that quick connect means that I can just fill this bag up somewhere and refill my main water bag from there. When I'm done, just undo the quick connect and plug the drinking hose quick connect back in, just like that. That means I never need to pack or unpack the uh, major two and a half liter bladder uh, from my frame bag, which is really helpful. It, it does not like to be in and out from there. But this little thing folds up neatly um, and goes into the panniers. Okay, protection from the elements is the next item here. First of all, I have these waterproof gloves. They go on in case of rain. When it's not raining, I have these Mountain Warehouse fingerless gloves. However, these are wonderful padded gloves for most of the things that I need them for. But when it's uh, raining, they soak everything in and they take forever to dry. That's why I have the two sets of riding gloves there. Then I have this wind jacket from Outdoor Vitals. I think it's the Nebo is what it's called. A windbreaker jacket. It is fantastic. Weighs four ounces, very little at all. Uh, and really adds extra warmth. In the mornings when it's a little cooler, I'm expecting to be wear, able to wear that, keep me nice and warm on the bike without too much extra weight. All very good. Next, uh, you've probably seen these before. These are frog tugs. Uh, it is a complete rain set and these are waterproof all the way around. Um, and uh, they're very lightweight very waterproof and I have tested them to make sure that they work. It's both the jacket there and also these rain pants that protect my pants from getting too soaked as well. In case of rain, I'll, I will stop, put on my rain gear and keep going. There's no reason to be suffering when you're on a tour. And as you can see, the rain gear and the windbreaker and all my cook gear and stuff fits right in the top of these panniers in the trunk bag portion. All right, next up we have the food that's coming with. Now I'm only doing a little sampling of it here uh, since, as I said, I will have more along the way, but I'm always planning to bring some essentials with me uh, just in case. 
Uh, I found these last time I was in REI. They are egg crystals. Yeah, dehydrated eggs. We'll see how those are for the morning. If uh, I need some warm breakfast to keep me going and there's not a cafe or something around, this will do pretty well. Uh, for mealtimes, I plan to use, uh, again, eat restaurants where I can and uh, pick up resupply along the way. Uh, but I'm also planning to bring some of these dehydrated meals. These are from Backpacker's Pantry, uh, green curry and pad thai with chicken. Um, I also will be bringing some tortillas and peanut butter and uh, being able to pick up some tuna fish or chicken salad along the way to add to those as I need to. Um, but I'm making, uh, I'm making a note from my Katy Trail mistake. This time I'm bringing along only a little bit of the food and resupplying along the way rather than trying to bring everything all at once. For the four or five days of the Katy Trail, that was one thing. But for the six days I'm going to be out in uh, Ohio, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to bring it all from the start. I will, however, be bringing a supply of Cliff Bars with me. I do like Cliff Bars as kind of a, if I'm getting hungry, if I'm slowing down on uh, the biking, eating a cliff bar really uh, perks me right back up. I know some people get sick of them, but I haven't yet. I do have a water bottle. Now you might say, well, you're already carrying two and a half liters of water in your bladder. Why would you need a water bottle? Well, the water bottle uh, serves two purposes. One, when it rains, uh, as you'll see, I'll need to put the water bladder hose, uh, tuck it back into the frame bag, which is waterproof, um, in order to prevent anything else in the frame bag from getting wet. So the water bottle allows me to drink water even while it's raining, very important function. It also lets me put in some uh, energy squirts when I need them. These are caffeinated uh, caffeine and B vitamins, the main way to get some extra nutrients in. Uh, you never know what you're gonna find along the way, but a little caffeine in the morning uh, is really helpful. And these things are available at like gas stations and grocery stores, so I can pick up refills along the way. I mentioned the camp suds earlier. These, this is a great little thing of soap. Um, you just flip it open, use a tiny squirt of soap with some water, and it suds up like crazy. Use this for cleaning my body and dishes. It works for all of the purposes, and it's biodegradable. So it's great. It doesn't hurt the environment. Okay, so that's food and water uh, out of the way. What else do we have here? Ah, yes. Now, let's talk about electronics. I uh, recently picked up this bag from Ulanzi. Uh, it actually was a free, um, a free bonus that they offered along with the microphone system that I'm using. Uh, this mic is the AM18 U-Mic system from Ulanzi, and uh, you can tell me how it sounds, but I do like that it clips on and has the wind muff and is wireless, so all of these things are excellent. Um, along the way, I've got a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. This will keep me charged even if I don't have electricity at a campsite or something, I can recharge from there. I have various cords, including headphones and USB-C and uh, the charger for my watch and USB micro. Uh, where there is a wall outlet, I have a three um, USB-A adapter here. I believe this, uh, is a total of 15 watts uh, divided among its three outputs. So five watts each. It's not a fast charger, but it does charge multiple things at the same time. For fast charging, I have my old fast charge adapter. Um, so all very helpful cables, what have you, and they fit neatly in this, I say as I try to fill this pocket, they fit neatly in this uh, zippered pocket. Also in this bag, I'm carrying batteries for the Sony camera, batteries for the drone, battery charger for the Sony batteries, and the uh, mic and its receiver all um, charge with USB-C, so they don't need a separate uh, battery pack. But I just like that all of this fits in here neatly. Um, I don't have to worry about it too much. It does zip back up, even with everything in. And once it's zipped, the zipper is actually waterproof. Very, very handy for, uh, or water resistant, I should say. I wouldn't want to drop this in the water, but carrying it in the bike, I don't mind if it gets a little sprinkles on it from the, here or there. For navigation, I have my Garmin. Uh, this is brand new for this trip. I've used it a little bit here in Tulsa, but haven't uh, used it on the trip yet. 
And this uh, is the Garmin Edge 130, an older model. It works really well for tracking me along the way, letting people know where I am. And uh, those uh, maps will be on Komoot and on uh, Relive once this is all over, if you want to follow the trail and see what path I actually took. All right, now let's move on to the filming gear and then we'll put it all on the bike and call it a day. So for my filming equipment, I'm bringing probably more than I need to. First of all, I have this nice little GoPro here on a Teleson neck mount. I can wear it uh, around my neck to get uh, POV shots. The neck mount is actually fairly comfortable and because of the way it's designed, it actually works as kind of a uh, tripod, a quick tripod to set it up if I need to. So that's the GoPro. It's a Hero 8 Black model. Um, also bringing, as previously mentioned, this Sony, uh, this is the ZV-E10. Uh, it has, along with it, the um, 18 to 130, uh, 135 lens on it. Uh, allows me to zoom in. GoPro is great for wide shots. The ZV-E10 is great for long distance shots or for static things. It does okay, but the GoPro stabilization is so much better. Uh, as I mentioned on it, I have the Ulanzi um, UM, I'm sorry, UMIC AM18, brand new to me. And you can see it's working there. And that's kind of neat. So that's the, the main camera setup. Then ah, I got my drone pilot license, FAA part 105. And uh, fantastic to be able to bring this little tiny drone with me along with its controller. And I've got the controller connected in an interesting way uh, that I'm looking forward to trying out on this. This little backing piece allows it to connect to the bike in the same way that my cell phone does. Bringing a little um, UltraPod um, tripod from Pedco, this is, or Kestrel is the other company that sells them. And it folds up very nice and small. Um, and has a Velcro section that allows it to be Velcroed onto standing objects, allowing me to get a little bit of a different perspective so I can get some ride-by shots and the like. All of that goes into this Low Pro bag. The Low Pro bag has plenty of room uh, for all of those things. And I have an extra selfie stick in here uh, to get some shots on the bike as well. All right, and now, Let's get everything we have onto the bike, ready to go, as it will be for the Ohio to Erie Trail. Here we go, and whoop! <laughs> and there you are, friend humans. Everything is packed up and ready for the Ohio to Erie Trail. I am so excited to start this 326 mile journey to Cleveland from Cincinnati. But before I go, there is one more thing you should know about, and that is the bike itself. I'm gonna be taking my trusty steed Chiron here, a Poseidon X. But if you want to know more about the bike and any of the spares that I'm taking for the trip, that will be in another video coming up soon. Along with the one bag I didn't talk about, this Topeak Tour Guide, which contains all those spares. In any case, I need to get going here. Time is a-wasting as we get ever closer to the beginning of this journey. Until next time, friend humans, I'm Lucas Levy Keppel. It's about 326 miles along mostly paved trails, which if you saw my Katy Trail video, link up here if you didn't, uh, then you may find it, uh, nope. <laughs> Distracted myself, forgot what I was gonna say. I've said it four times, I should know. Cool about the pants though. They have, whoa, <laughs> they have zips, but they are, eesh. let's see if I can do this. I can't really. Uh, here, better idea. Take it off and then just deal with the way that goes. Ooh, windy day. Okay. Yep. I had a feeling something like that was going to happen. Ooh. It seems to have unzipped a lot further than I anticipated. That's fine. I uh, like so. And then you can 
Use the air. Ooh, that's loud. To fill up the sleeping mat. Like that. Just enters the sleeping mat easily. It means you don't have to run up. <laughs> oh, buddy. Check that camera angle. Lid goes on there. And assuming all goes well, which it didn't quite. Hold on. It's two hands. 